Hey, Sean here from P2R. Today I'm gonna to be putting together one of our brand new short blocks we got here, which is a J35A4 engine. We got those brand new short blocks from Honda. We're putting it together with a brand new set of our CNC ported cylinder heads with a Ferrero valve train package. Basically we wanna show you what our cylinder heads can do as a direct drop on for essentially somebody that wants to run a stop block J series with a set of our CNC heads. We wanna show you what it can do. And I wanna take you through the process of us putting this engine together. So what I have here is a brand new J35A4 cylinder block and I'm going to be putting on a set of our CNC ported cylinder heads with uh, the valve train. So um, we just got the Kometic head gaskets in that we're now offering for the J series. So um, here we're going to be using the Kometic head gasket in a 0 0.27, 027 thickness. We got the ARP head studs. The reason we went with the little thinner head gasket, we're trying to bump the compression a little bit. We milled the cylinder heads just a little bit. We didn't take too much off. We're still trying to make sure we keep a, a pretty decent uh, piston to valve clearance. But we wanted to just, um, you know, get as much out of it as we can, being that the block is 100% stock. And I believe the J35A4 is coming right around like 10 to 1 compression or something like that. So here I'm opening the cylinder head. This is um, was just finished. It's uh, CNC ported. In this head, we did the SuperTech valve train. We did Ferrera 35 millimeter intake valves and the Ferrera 30 millimeter exhaust valves. The reason we went 35 on this cylinder head is because the 35A4 uh, block, the, the piston, the valve reliefs are really only set up for 35 millimeter. I mean, I've, I know people have put in 36 millimeter on there, but again, we don't want to run into any issues whatsoever. And the fact that we took a little bit off the heads as well and the thinner head gasket from Kometic, we just want to make sure that we're pretty much set and ready to go. This car needs to run six hour endurance races as well as the roll racing. Should be all good. Besides that, the heads also have um, our bronze guides that we offer, complete competition valve job, everything like that's ready to go. Just placing the heads on. I screw the studs in by hand. That's pretty much how ARP recommends it. Just screw them down all the way by hand. Got the dowel pins to keep the head gasket lined up, get the head uh, put in place properly. Once I finish putting all of the ARP washers and nuts on, I'm gonna use my DeWalt um, impact here, but I'm not gonna put any force on these nuts with the gun. I'm just literally speeding up the process a little bit, screwing them down a little bit faster, but. Literally, don't even, didn't even get the five foot pounds of torque. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to torque the ARP studs down. We're going to, I, the recommendations are for three steps. I typically do it within four steps. I go from 30 foot pounds. Once I've torqued everywhere at 30, I go to 50, 70, and then for our final, we go ahead and torque to 90 foot pounds. And then the ARP, and then the heads will. Once we get to 90 foot pounds, the cylinder heads will be torqued down and ready to go. Now that I got the cylinder heads on, I'm going to go ahead and install the camshaft next. This is the same cam that I was sharing with you guys previously. This one is a VTEC killer cam where we eliminated all the other lobes on the intake except for the one VTEC lobe. That's because this engine is going to be using the aluminum rockers, which only is a single lobe for the intake. So this, this um, you'll all get to hear once we put this and start it up, you'll all get to hear exactly how this engine's gonna sound because I know a lot of guys always ask me, well, how does, how does it idle? You know, how does it sound with the VTEC killer cams in there? To be honest, um, you know, I think it's gonna idle fairly close to stock to be honest, but probably just have to raise the RPM a little bit higher. So the cams slide in, pretty much quite easily you do want to make sure you put a little bit of oil on everything just to slide them in quite just to slide them in easier as you can see I have everything well lubed here that's just makes the process a little bit easier on the install and to make sure nothing gets binded up or before there's any oil pressure in the engine now that I got the camshaft in I'm gonna be using our cam seal install tool here this tool we also sell on our website this tool pretty much allows you to install the cam seal a lot easier. We're basically screwing a bolt right through the actual camshaft. And as we tighten with the ratchet, it's gonna pull the seal in right to where we wanna install it. 
So it's a really simple, really easy to use tool to make sure you install the cam seal right every time. Then I got to uh, do the same thing on the rear cylinder head, get that cam seal installed properly. And um, from there, we'll move on to the next step. The only thing with this tool is you can actually put the seal in too deep. So what I always recommend is you take a look at the seal that you're pulling out of your cylinder head just to kind of see what the installed height should be for the seal and just try to follow that. I mean, there's no general rule of thumb to be exact. I mean, if you look at the Honda book, you know, they don't have an exact number of exactly how far you should go in as well either. Okay, now that we got the cam seals installed, the next uh, step here is for us to go ahead and um, start installing the rocker arms. So what I got here are some WPC treated rocker shafts. These shafts are actually part of a kit we're going to be selling if guys want to buy a full aluminum rocker set up from us. Now we are going to have to slide the rockers on first, but I just like to rest them down, make sure I got them on the right side. With the aluminum rockers, you never want to have aluminum rubbing against aluminum. So there are shims or metal washers that you put in between every single rocker. That's They are made of steel and that would make sure that we have no aluminum rubbing against aluminum so that there is no binding or anything going to get messed up with the heat and all the rotations and RPM. I'm starting here with the intake side. I'll get all three intake rockers installed. This side's a little bit easier because there's no spring like on the exhaust side. So you just need to pretty much line them up properly. Make sure you have a washer on both sides of that intake rocker and pretty much goes on quite easily. Now we got the cam plate that needs to be installed. Make sure you have your cam position sensor installed on that plate. I went ahead and cleaned these up real nice. Just trying to make sure everything on the engine looks nice and fresh. Since we are using a cam from a newer engine on here, we're going to be using the P2R camshaft spacer because this is a J35A4 or J32A2 style cylinder head. We do need to space out the cam gear just a little bit. So we put the spacer in the back and then we got the washer that goes in the front and this pretty much locks the cam gear in place. Um, and that's how you install our cam spacer. A lot of guys buy it from us. They're using like the J35A8 cams on an older engine. Um, so hopefully that helped you understand how to install it. Just put the spacer on, then your cam gear, and then you can basically use our front washer, which fills in the rest of the space and goes into the keyway. And then you just screw that bolt in and you're pretty much ready to go there. So with that, I got all the rockers installed. I got the, the cam gears in place. I need to now get everything at TDC. Start with the rear cam. Um, I mean, typically when you're resting the heads on the block or you're putting the cam in, it's best to try to get everything as close to TDC from the start as possible. So you don't have to go too far away. This way you don't have to worry about any valve to piston contact when trying to rotate anything. So we do want to make sure and double check our cam um, timing marks. Make sure our crank itself is at TDC as well. Now when you're installing a timing belt, we are going to go in a counterclockwise direction. We start at the actual crankshaft. We want to make sure we hold it really nice and tight. As you see, I have a little bit of help here, just keeping that belt on the actual crank trigger wheel setup just to hold it really nice and tight. And I come around the front cylinder head, hold it nice and tight, and then we'll go up under the water pump. Once we're on the water pump, we'll go on to the rear cam. Go up and around, make sure that's nice and tight. Looks like I jumped there, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna pull it back tight, come around the, the rear cam, and then go in front of the tensioner. As long as you keep that pressure down on the crank itself, no, we don't have to worry about any of the teeth jumping. Now we got the P2R billet tensioner in here. This is one of the probably the easiest um, tensioners you can use. I mean, it's very simple. You're literally just going to screw it until you get to the optimal tension. So in this case, um, I have a nut on the outside and on the inside just so that we get 
you know, basically a backup plan to make sure it never loosens on us. So essentially here I'm just going to tighten it by hand a little bit until we got enough tension on the belt that Richard can let go of that bottom part of the timing belt. Once he does that, I'm just going to feel the belt for some tension, see where it's at. And before I actually tighten the tensioner, I'm going to go ahead and um, when I say tighten, I'm going to tighten it just enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate the motor around and make sure we stay at TDC after we do two full rotations here. So we'll spin it around, we'll get back to TDC, and then we'll overlook everything one more time, make sure that everything was installed properly. We did a couple engine revolutions and it's all still exactly timed how it should be. Finishing touches here, really. Let's get a Honda oil filter, put a little bit of oil in it, make sure it's um, you know pre-lubed, put a little oil on the seal. You can see some oil splatting out there because I probably put a little too much but you know, never hurts to have too much on assembly. So let's give that a quick cinch. Got to get the side time belt mount installed and then we can move on to installing the time belt cover plastics. We're actually gonna be releasing some plastics in the near future, the time belt cover. That's gonna be a transparent. That's gonna be really exciting. It's gonna be an easy way to always see where your timing is at. On this engine, we're using tit our titanium intake manifold and titanium exhaust manifold stud kits that we offer. Just a little, you know, just trying to make everything look nice and neat, make everything look good. So now that the engine is timed, the number, the main thing we have to do now is do a valve adjustment. Valve adjustment is pretty much pretty easy. It's straightforward. The cam actually tells you which one to do at what moment. So once that's all said and done, you can't bore you with can't bore you with the details of, of doing the time of doing the valve adjustment but we got our p2r billet cam seal we're using uh silver on this engine i think everything we're just going with the billet uh silver clear anodized look for everything on this engine just a simple clean look we got to make sure we install a knock sensor before we install the runners install the runners don't forget to put the dowel pins they're not shown here in the video, but the dowel pins that hold the intake gasket in place before you slip in your runners. That way you know everything is sitting nice and right. This is our um, CNC ported lower intake manifold runners that's on there. I mean, this engine is pretty much just about ready to go. We got to put in, we're putting a new exhaust gasket on there one time. We're, we already had the, obviously the P2R big tube headers on the car. So our headers, um, we're just reinstalling the same one that's been on the car from previously. We put some 650cc FIC injectors on the engine because we are planning to switch to E85. We're actually going to do an E85 tune and a 93 octane tune. You know, for the roll racing, I think we're probably running E85 and then on the road course, we'll just run the 93 octane. So we installed the bigger injectors one time with the P2R fuel rails so that we, way we have enough fuel for whatever it is we're doing. In the next video, actually, we're going to be finishing the install in the car getting on the dyno we'll share the dyno results with you and we just basically want to show you what exactly you can make with a similar setup a stock block j35a4 with a set of our cnc ported cylinder heads and a set of cams thanks again for watching this video i hope you guys learned some knowledge on this engine and we'll be on the dyno very soon and i'll show you guys what this motor can put down for horsepower i'll see you guys next time mm -hmm.